Okay, yeah. So um uh did everybody read the the lab before before coming to the Zoom call? Okay. Um everyone else think that it's a pretty straightforward lab? Okay. So and just like last time, um I want to go through the um I was called video with you guys. And I want you to, and I'm going to ask you questions, just say things, I'll tell you things um, during the video. Um, has anyone actually like watched the video yet for the lab? No? Okay. Um, so I guess he posted a little earlier, but I don't know if at one point I could see it or, 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 or if y'all could see it. Um, so I'm going to make this. Man, this and then I'm going to share my screen with y'all. Um, and also too, so so can can everyone see that? Just give me like a thumbs up or something. All right, cool. Uh, so at like a certain part in the in the video, um, there's going to be a part where you have to. Um, I'm record a, a melting point range uh, for for three three different compounds. And so for the first one, um, I don't know if, if anyone wants to wants to volunteer, um, but I would just like someone to tell me when they think the the melting starts at like what time in the video, what temperature it says, um, based on on just what you see. And then you know we'll we'll kind of like okay did you did you get it kind of spot on were you a little off were you a little late you know whatever um, just to try to make this a little bit more of an engaging lab uh, because yeah it's a pretty straightforward lab there's like you're just watching something melt and that's pretty much it so um, anyway so let's get started. So let's just take a little time just to read that. Um, just so, some good overall like advice for this lab and for for future labs when they get a little bit more uh, well a lot well, I'll say a lot but you know just just more intense um, when there's more to it. This is all things you guys should probably already know anyway. So let's keep going. So there's all your equipment. Um, does everybody here have a lab manual? Um, by, uh, does anyone here not have a lab manual? I don't have one yet. They, they don't have any. It's, okay. I haven't gotten it yet. Who, like who's talking ordered. right now? Trey. Trey. Uh, Trey, can you turn on your, your video for me? Yeah, let's don't see. see. Uh, someone in the chat said something. Is this the student that doesn't have a mic? I can scan you copies. I have this one in the last. Yeah, if uh, like up on group, group me or something. Okay. That might be helpful. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Sean. So, so you have all the labs? Like, do you actually have like a a, a lab manual? Okay. And I'm guessing you're typing on the chat because you don't have a mic. I have okay, gotcha. Students. Ah, napping baby. Ah, I have an I have an older student. Cool. So I'm not the. I might not be the old. The, the oh, that's cute. I might not be the, old, well, that's, the oldest. That's person why I here, like so. to leave my camera off. Is because I've got two kids ah, around the house. I see. I see. Nice. Parent life. Uh, I don't. I don't know that yet. But you know, someday. Anyway. Um. So cool, Sean. Yeah. If you could. If you could upload that. We can't do it. Um. I know that if you email Dr. Urban, um, I know he uploaded this last one because one student didn't have it, but really like Dr. Urban like can't like give that to the students because it's like a copyright uh, thing. So um, 
you know, I understand that like for, for some of y'all, like the, the bookstore is backed up. Um, but yeah, it's, I guess more students enrolled than he anticipated. Um, so anyway, moving forward with the video. So can anyone tell me what these are? Um, anyone ever seen these before? I mean, I mean, one of them has its name on it, so. So yeah, it's a melt station. Right, it's them. probably a melt station. De definitely a melt station, definitely. Left uh, is right. Is what? A lab quest. A lab, yeah, there you go, you must have took it another lab or something, I'm, I'm guessing. But yeah, it's a, it's a lab quest. It can do a lot of things um, in terms of like, you know, what it can read. It can read temperature, it can look at like, you know, absorbance spectra. Um, so this is what, you know, they actually use at the school, you know, to, to actually do this experiment. Um, so you have it uh, set up. Does anyone know what this big, long, green rod is for? No? Well, in the lab, we're going to use it to help pack the little um, glass tube. Mm -hmm. Caliber, who's, whatever. Who's, who's talking right now? Hey, sorry. This is Laura Burgess. Okay. I don't have a camera. You don't, with have, the you don't have a camera? That's fine. That's OK. If you don't have it, that's fine. Um, but anyway, so yeah, exactly. So it's used to pack the capillary tube. Um, you have your spatula, your capillary tubes here on the left. Um, can you guys see the the little mouse I'm, I have over the screen? Okay. So here's your your weight of your uh, finacetin. Um, I don't know if you guys want to write that down real quick, if you do. Give me like 15 more seconds, and we'll keep going. Where do we write that down? Uh, on your on your data sheet, if you if you have it. Um, otherwise, just write it in a on like a piece of paper. Um, he did upload this lab though, so. Um, if you guys could use that uh, upload to submit your post lab, that'd be great. Yeah, I only see like the parts where it's about what the melting points are. I don't see where it's like the weight. Oh, yeah, really? I don't think we have to. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm still, I'm trying to make this as, as like uh, engaging it, um, as possible. So uh, why do you want to crush a sample with a spatula uh, before you load it into the capillary tube? So it can react with the compound more. So there's more surface area of the compound, maybe? More surface area of the compound. Okay. Yeah, so like kind of like more of the compound can kind of like touch the, the the glass. So when it heats up the glass, it's like really heating up the like more of the compound instead of like gaps. So it like melts more more evenly. Would you say? Okay. Yeah. Anyone else have another another answer? Maybe so that you can just actually get it into the capillary tube. Sometimes like the little chunks are just too big. Um, so,
It's all very exciting. See the little guy right there, it's nice and packed in there. So, um, how would you expect him to, to melt this? Uh, if it's a known compound, like, you know, you know, what the, the, the melting temperature should be, how would he, um, he melt this. <clears throat> Anyone can answer. Um, like at a slow rate so he can observe the melting point. Right on, right on. And so if this was an unknown compound, uh, it is all in your, in your lab manual. So um, if you guys did read it, you know, should know this, but um, if you don't know it, what could you do to save time. Heat it rapidly within like 15 degrees Celsius of the melting range. Well, you don't know what the what the melting range is, right? This is an unknown compound. You just heat it rapidly in general until it melts. Um, that way you have an idea of about when it's gonna melt and then you can do the, the rapid up until. Right. I knew you knew it, Trey. I knew you knew it. I know. And, and if you don't, if you don't want to answer, that's fine. I got like a small baby. You guys that have little babies in there. I don't want y'all waking up with the babies. So I'm guessing this is the only data you guys are gonna gonna have to record uh, is the, the the actual melting range. Um, so does anyone want to volunteer to kind of tell me like, hey, stop, like this is when it, it started melting and then tell me stop again uh, when it's done melting. Okay, Christine. I can do right it. On. All right, cool. So just keep your mic on so that way you can just tell me because it happens, happens pretty quickly. So before we start, you're looking at the one on the left, on the oh, far okay. left. Yeah. And he's not like, you know, touching the screen to indicate anything. He's just turning it on oh. to, to just keep it bright. So now? So 124.1. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if everyone wants to write that down, 124.1. And which one is this one? Is this for the? Spinacetin, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So once everyone writes that down, I'm gonna start it back up. And then um, Christine, tell me when to stop. Once you Wait, think it's so all melted. When it's all melted? Yep. Okay. So, all right. And here we go on now. So it'd be now. Oh, it's like a little bit. It's a little bit, right? There's still a little bit left, yeah. So let's play a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Right there, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So 
So would it just be, would we just put it as 124.1 to 134.3? Okay. So um, based on what we know about, about monthly points and, and pure compounds, what is our, our first uh, initial thought about this compound that's in the scapulary tube? Uh, it's not a pure compound. It's not a pure compound, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, but he says it is a pure, a pure compound. So but that's just an interesting thing to, um, to note. So let's keep going. And so we're going to do it again for the next one. Um, anyone else want to volunteer to be the stop person? This is a lot more fun this way. And I I'll think try. More. Okay. Gee, so you got to make it the, the, the guy with the baby do it. All right. Okay, so now we're looking at the one in the in the middle, Sean. Yep. Now. Okay, so one sixty three point zero. Right, it is down. starting to get a little uh, liquid in the bottom, right? Say, say that one more time, sorry. It is getting a little liquid in the bottom, yeah. right? My mm -hmm. screen's small, so. No, no, yeah, yeah, it is. You're right. It's, it's a good eye for having seen a small screen. Now. Now. Is it completely melted, you think? I know it's kind of hard to see. Does anyone else think it's not completely, me uh, uh, completely melted? A little bit of white in there still. Yeah, kind of like like on the top left, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's keep going a little bit longer. Now. Perfect. 172.7. 172.7. So we have some huge ranges for, you know, um, on supposedly uh, pure compounds. Um, but then again, uh, we still have to look at what the actual uh, uh, melting ranges are for these. I don't think they're this big though. So now we're doing tartaric acid. So who's gonna be my third, third person? Come on. I'll do it. Okay, Christina, okay. So again, the one in the center. No. Okay. So 164.7. All good. Okay. And now. Okay. One seventy four point eight. Okay, so apparently there's a part B to this lab uh, where we do um, a mixed melting points. Uh, he says, use the unknown compound code and melting point from your email to complete part C. Do you guys know what he's talking about there? Because yeah. I, don't, I don't know yeah. that I got an email, but maybe he sent you guys something that I didn't get but I don't know what that means. I'll check right now. Yeah. 
I just want to make sure that we all understand what this means because because I don't. Uh, he hasn't sent anything. It's just reminders to do like quizzes and stuff is all he's sent. Right on. So uh, if you guys, then I'll, I'll ask him about it. And either he'll email you all or I'll post something on, on our canvas. Um, says you must identify your unknown by melting point and record it on the conclusion line. If there's anything else to this video. So complete your data sheet, post lab questions and upload them to Canvas. And that's it. Um, so does anybody have any questions about what we just watched? No. no. Okay. Um, so I do stop sharing my screen. Um, I do want to talk about some of the questions. Okay. So he posted the PDF. Um, so what did we say the melting point of phenacetin was? Whoever took that down? 124 to 134. 124 to 134. So the melting point that it says in the lab manual is 134 to 136. Interesting. Um, for acetaminophen, what do we get for that melting point? 163 even to 172.7. So that one is 169 to 172. And then for the tartaric acid? 164.7 to 174.8. Okay, and, and um, if you guys look on here, the um, um, tartaric acid melting point, um, I don't know what I'm saying to look on here because I'm not sharing my screen anymore, but um, in the, the lab manual, um, if any of you guys, um, I'm, I'm have it open. Does anyone, uh, I have it open right now. Yeah, I got it. Okay. So do you see what it has that in the, um, um parentheses right there? Looking for it right now. Sorry. I'm trying to do this right. one handed. Very good. Yeah. It's on page 38. Um, yeah. On page 38, uh, on tartaric acid. Um, can you tell me what it says? Um, 171 to 174. Right, right. And what does that little DEC mean? Anyone know what that means? Decomposition. Decomposition, right. So um, what does that mean in terms of um, its, its melting point? Like, what does it mean by decomposition? It's where it turns black. Right, that's pretty much it, right? It's just, just, you know, where, where it turns black, it basically just like breaks down. Um, and sorry, I just, I want to go over the questions with you guys. So I'm kind of skipping around some stuff. Um, so your data sheet, uh, so the data sheet has the, um, the melting point. Um, it says include second and third trials. There's no you only know watching the same video. So um, that's normally like if you're in lab, you do, you, you know, um, I'm gonna repeat the experiment. Um, so you guys could just put all those, all those melting points there um, into the data sheet. And then part B, we're not doing that. And then you get an unknown number. Um, and then you get a melting point uh, of your pure unknown. And your mixture melting points, record those only necessary. So then you're going to get melting points of mixture with acetaminophen. I'm not sure that you're going to be doing the mixed melt, um, melting points. Uh, I think um, based on what part C says, and for you, for those of you that can't see it, um, actually, let me just share my screen again. Uh, so that way you can all see it. So down here on part C, um, I'm guessing, because he didn't say specifically, or he did say specifically just to put the um, temperatures and then your conclusion. 
So don't do this mixed um, uh, melting point part, but don't quote me on that. If there is, is data for it in the, in the data sheet, um, I'll put it there. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, so let's go through the post lab questions. Um, it says a student observed the following melting behavior. Um, sample started slowly turning to liquid at 95 degrees by 97 degrees. The sample was a pool of liquid with a chunk of solid suspended in it. The suspended solid slowly turned into liquid, becoming completely liquid at 98 degrees. Which of the following is the proper way to report this experimental melting point? This is your pre-lab assignment, so I'm guessing you guys have already done this now? Yeah. Okay, so um, how how did you guys report it? G. G, 95 to 98, right? Uh, it says, why are accurate melting points not obtained if the melting point bath is heated at a rate faster than two degrees per minute? It's harder to determine when it started melting. Right. And also, uh, because as you can see, like a lot of, uh, most times the, the melting point, um, it's basically what you said, Blaine. Uh, but in other words, um, you might skip the, the melting point range. So it'll just like melt like that, you know, just all melt just at once. And so, you, you know, you want to be able to see that kind of gradual um, a melting process to get that, that range. Um, it's also uh, helpful to, to be able to um, determine whether it's a pure or impure sample. Uh, what can the melting point of a mixture of a known and unknown solid reveal about the identity of the unknown solid? If it's similar to the known or how pure it is. Perfect. Perfect. So, so if it, if it is not the same as the known compound um, and someone other than um, um, Christina, Blaine, or Sean, uh, or Trey can answer this, but um, why is it, um, what would you expect to see if it's uh, a, an impurity um, with regards to the, to the melting point? What kind of change would you see? There would be like a wider range between okay. the numbers. What about the starting melting point? In most cases. Maybe it would be lower. Lower, right? Yeah. yeah. Right on. So yeah, a wider range and it would start lower. Um, uh, let's see. Um, Yeah, so this is uh, an, an interesting question. So basically they're trying to say, can you deduce um, based on just the melting point alone, is this similar or is this um, compound A or not compound A? Uh, so what would you guys say? What did it, like any of you put for that answer? I put that it wouldn't be okay because the melting point is Y. Agreed. Right, right on. Um, and then would you say it's a uh, compound B or not? It's possible. Yeah. Uh, it is possible. It could also have calibration issues because it's off just by a few degrees, uh, observation issues, a slightly impure compound, but basically it is this B. But I, I really do like that part of the answer that you said with in terms of like um, human error, right? Yeah. So maybe we thought it was, you know, started to melt, but you know, it's pretty much within that range mm -hmm. or it's, you know, 
Right. You know what I'm saying? With, whereas A is so far off, you know, it's obviously not A. Um, so, and I'm guessing these are your post lab questions here. So yeah, so just do these questions here. Um, and yeah, um, does anyone have any questions? Um, nope. I do. So for okay. part B on the data sheet, we're not filling in any information on that? Nope. Okay, and then for part C, all we need is the unknown number, the melting point, and the conclusion? Yeah, um, and and like I said earlier, if there is data, let me, let me check that real quick. I, did, did he give you guys like any data um, for for anything or just was it all just what was in the in the video? Video only. Okay, so then yeah, don't even worry about that um, mixed melting point. So yeah, so just what was in the, um, well, no, he should be giving you guys some unknown data, right? Let me check Canvas on his side real quick. Give me a second. It says you must identify your unknown by melting point and record it on the conclusion line. Yeah, the implication was that we would get a separate email with an unknown and probably okay. the melting point. Yeah, I'm checking it now. Okay. Because I'm not sure if he sends me all the same things that he sends you guys. Uh, nothing. Nothing in emails yet. Okay. So I don't know when he's going to send that to you guys. I'm guessing after, because, you know, you don't see the lab until 2 o'clock. I'll probably send the email, you know, later today. Um, and, yeah, so that's it. I know I kind of drag us out a little bit for such a, you know, um, um, basic lab, but, you know, just to make this as engaging as possible. So if no one has any questions, um, that's it. And Oh, Sean? If anybody needs it, I will do a full scan on the entire chapter uh, for today's labs and put it on the group me. So it will be yeah. available probably and give me about two hours because of, you know, and uh, take all the time you need, Sean. You guys will have them. All right. All right. Thanks, Sean. All right, guys. Have a good weekend. Thank you all. You have a good weekend, too. You too. Bye. Bye.